Hello everybody and welcome to the very first Ladies We Love by Addictive Daughter, uh, our very first Skype call. Our very first Skype call and we have an amazing guest with you for us, with you and us today. Her name is Kate Northrup, she is in America, we are sat in the dark in London as you can see. <laughs> um, Kate Northrup is amazing, she is a creative entrepreneur, she is the author of this incredible book which you have got there, Money A Love Story and it is literally no exaggeration when we say, when I say that this book has quite literally changed my life. Uh, Joey bought it for me for Christmas and it's, it's changed my life. You need to get this book if you have any struggles, inner struggles with money, um, which many of us do in our 20s, let's face it, let's be honest. Um, Kate has also, she at, at the tender age of 28, she cre achieved financial freedom for herself, which is amazing. And she uh, did this through building a team of more than 3,000 wellness entrepreneurs in the network, network marketing industry. Um, and it's her philosophy that if you achieve financial freedom for yourself, then you can be truly present to your purpose on the planet, which is amazing. Um, Kate has also featured on the Today Show, Women's Health, Glamour, The Huffington Post, Red Magazine, you name it, Kate's been there. Great. So, um, this is actually quite timely, isn't it, Kate? Because um, Kate's coming to London in just over a week now. Yeah. There is an amazing event uh, run by Hay House Publishers called Ignite London. And Kate's going to be one of the guest speakers there. So if you like what you hear today, please book your tickets for the 8th and 9th of March in uh, South Kensington in London. And we'll see you there. Uh, right. Should we, should we crack on? Let's do it. <laughs> so, first question is... Um, Addictive Daughter, we are all about curing the quarter-life crisis from the inside out. And uh, so the, the audience that are going to be watching this are going to be sort of mainly probably 20s, early 30s, maybe a bit either side of that. Yeah. And um, a lot of us are going through kind of money struggles, particularly those of us who are trying to pursue our life purpose, but also trying to pay the, the rent and bills at the same time. And I just wondered if you could sort of talk us through your experiences in your 20s and uh, your struggles and how you've got to where you are today. Absolutely. So I'll give as short of a version as I can. But when I was 22, I moved to New York City, which is another extremely expensive city. Yeah. I know London is as well. And so even though I had a business at that time and I was financially independent, meaning I was making my own money at that time, uh -huh. I was not paying very good attention to my money. So I was making it, but then it was just it like went somewhere. And I ended up in over $20,000 worth of debt because over and, you know, in pounds, that's at least 30000 if not 40000 So I was every month just spending more than I made, spending more than I made and wasn't paying attention to that. I, I was scared of the whole thing and I was... A little bit bratty, actually, I'll say, in just not wanting to deal with it. I just kind of hoped that, you, I mean, this is embarrassing, but it's true. I hoped that I would either meet some a ma rich man who could would just pay it for me yeah. or that my mom would bail me out. Those yeah. were kind of my two things. And what I did at the time, I, I was raised with a, a whole library of Hay House books and personal growth material, and I kind of thought if I just did enough affirmations that somehow my debt would disappear. Yeah. But um, it's not a surprise probably to you that it didn't, that didn't work. And just the acting as if and kind of living up here in the universal whatever didn't, didn't pay off my debt. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't getting any better and I wasn't changing my behavior and I couldn't figure out why. But one day I had a moment, I was on an airplane and I was writing in my journal and I realized if I were to treat my financial consciousness as part of my self-care and see it as an honor and a privilege to be able to look at my money and, and spend it on things that I value and take really good care of it and become financially literate, if I could see that as part of my self-love and self-care regimen, then maybe I would actually do it. Because up until that point, it was very, I approached financial, my financial life from the perspective of earning money, you know, that was like the only part. And then it, and then it, what I, I, I would beat myself up. I felt really badly about myself. I had so much shame about my debt and the beating myself up and the shame led me to not want to deal with it. It just made me feel bad. So I just avoided it altogether. Yeah. But when I made that shift and I began to deal with my finances from a place of 
self-love and self-care, and I saw that my financial lack of awareness was actually a way that I was keeping myself small, and it was kind of a symptom of a lack of self-love. I thought, okay, well, if I can use financial awareness as a, as a practical manifestation of self-love and self-care, maybe it'll work. And, and it did. Within a year of that time, my income and doubled my savings and healed a lot of relationships in my life as well, which were intermingled with my lack of self-worth. So I needed to, that was, you know, all the money stuff is great, but it's, it's, all the other stuff is a little bit more important. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That actually leads really nicely onto our next question, because actually my favorite thing about the book, I've read a few finance books, and to be honest, they really freaked me out, because <laughs> they were all like, you know, go and invest, or, you know, do all the, and I got very overwhelmed by them. And what's so amazing about your book is it's, it's so in kind of keeping with what we believe, which is it's all about self-love and it's all about yeah. self-worth. And, you know, the title of your book is brilliant, Money, A Love Story. It kind of juxtaposes them. And you, it's not something you usually see together. We think is, yeah. we have my self-worth, my self-love, and, uh, and then I put that there, and then money is over there. And mm -hmm. it's not spiritual. I think that's, you know, a kind of a big thing. And, yes. and I think that... Um, what we love as well in the book is just all the little practical exercises, just so great and not overwhelming mm -hmm. at all. Um, just wonderful. So you talked about how important self-love is. And if you've got any kind of little tips, um, really just how, how we can practice self-love um, to help us with our own money issues. Yeah, so one of the things that you can do, because I always, I hear about self-love and even now, you know, I, I, I teach self-love, but I read about self-love, oh, you just need to love yourself more. And I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know, I mean, like, how do I do that? And so um, one of the exercises that I give in the book that I recommend is writing down before you go to bed three things that you value about yourself or three ways that you added value to somebody else's life that day. Mm -hmm. Because money is really just a stand-in for what we value, and it's an exchange where we exchange, this is valuable to me, so I'm going to give this, this substance, which is money that we've mm -hmm. made up as humans, in order to do this. And so if we learn to value ourselves more and celebrate how valuable we are and celebrate the way we add value to the world, others will value us more as well, we'll make more money, and we'll also take better care of the money we already have, which is a really important piece of the puzzle. Amazing. Yeah, wicked. Um, you talk a lot in the book about internal beliefs. Mm -hmm. And... Um, as Persia mentioned, and a lot of the stuff we deal with, with addictive daughter, whether it be relationships, career, anything really, it's an inside job. And um, if you've got kind of um, negative limiting beliefs around money, you know, you're going to stumble, you're going to be held back. Can you give us three um, kind of classic, what you'd consider classic ones, for perhaps for the 20s generation, for younger women, where we struggle and and ways in which we might shift off ourselves out of that and move on. Absolutely. So one of the beliefs is I'm not good with money. Right. That's mm -hmm. just, I, if you're if you're going around saying I'm not good with money, you will not be good with money. Yeah. And and nobody was born good with money. No nobody even knew what money was when they were born. And so we've all had to learn it. And whether or not you're good with money is dependent upon whether or not you decide to learn how to be good with money. It's a total learned skill, and anybody has the capacity to do it. And I would say that those of us who are more tuned in with our emotions and with our interior landscape are actually at an advantage to be really good with money and to, to deal with our money in a way that's aligned with our purpose and who we really are as, as people. So that's number one, I'm not good with money. Mm -hmm. um, another one is that somebody else should do this for me. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. I like that. Yeah. I just, like, can't somebody just, this is, well, so, and then, so I guess buried within that or, or another one, which is this is too hard or money is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of the same thing as I'm not good with money, but I think it's a subtly different. Mm -hmm. But buried within somebody else should do this for me is that really we don't believe that we are good enough. Mm -hmm. To deal with it or smart enough so anytime we're thinking I am not blank enough mm. that would be a limiting that would be a limiting belief and and the belief that somebody should swoop in and do it for you robs you of the opportunity to learn it when I paid off my debt I felt like I could do anything I felt like oh thank goodness nobody came in and swooped in and did this for me because I would have never known what I was made of and I 
I could, you know, all of the things that I have could be completely taken away and I would be able to rebuild because I learned the skills and the mindset that was necessary to get that debt paid off, but I wouldn't have learned it if somebody just wrote a check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So true. So, so that one, somebody else should do this for me. And then, and then I did already touch on this, but just to highlight, because I glommed them together, is I'm not blank enough. So I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not anything enough is going to lead to not enough in your bank account. Because thinking you're not enough will reflect in how much value you're you're projecting into the world. Mm-hmm. And if you think you're not enough, you will be treated as though you're not enough. Mm-hmm. And financially, you won't get enough. And you'll manifest situations in which there's not enough. Yeah. So really changing that to, I am more than enough, I always have been. And again, coming back to celebrating your value and celebrating what you have to offer. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting, actually, because we were talking about this the other day. It's like women haven't had access to money or control over money, or and you know, so we beat us up particularly. You know, I think we beat ourselves up so much, but we don't get taught this stuff in schools. Like, what which no. would have been really bloody useful, actually, to, to be taught how to manage money. So it would be useful. <laughs> it would have been so useful. So that's that's so interesting, isn't it? That women just, yeah, we're very new to this. And mm-hmm. so why would we? Why would we know how to do it? Mm-hmm. It is something you have to learn like anything else. And I think what you mentioned as well about the shame that people can put mm-hmm. on you when, you know, if you do say that money is important or, you know, that you'd like to be live a comfortable life, yeah. it can be seen as overtly kind of like, wow, or you're not a spiritual person mm-hmm. or exactly. and that kind of separation. Have you experienced that yourself? Um, I, let's see, have I? I have certainly had judgment from people for teaching about money, for wanting to make money, for running a successful business. It's interesting because we were so scared to run out of money, but I think that on the other side of it, sometimes depending on how we were raised or the belief system, we're scared to really become financially successful as well because then we are can become the target of other people's judgment mm-hmm. and other people's hang up around money. So I know that I've had a little bit of that in my own life, kind of a fear of going as big as I could because I don't want to stand that could be lurking in there for mm-hmm. some as well mm-hmm. yeah it's like the whole like hiding your light under a bushel yes. yeah yeah interesting amazing so we, we are so excited after this chat that for, to, to see you on the hay house stage we can't wait so so you're coming to speak at the hay house ignite event in it's in south ken we'll put a link below this everybody watching um it's amazing it's going to feature the most exciting kind of new thought leaders and people who talk amazing stuff in wellness and spirituality everything like that um so with that in mind have you got any little tasty teaser nuggets that you can give us um about what you're going to be talking about at the event yeah actually uh i'm working on a new you know kind of a new perspective because i've been out there talking about the book for a while Mm -hmm. and i have to keep it interesting for myself so i have to do new things and so um I will be talking a little bit about uh, my own personal health journey and how that relates to my money journey and how that can teach other people how um, not only financially but also in their physical health, specifically around the second chakra, which is the area of the body that has to do with money, sex, and power. So that might have been really esoteric for some people, but it's going to apply to your financial life and then also to feeling powerful in all other areas of your life basically and Amazing. you have to come to the event to understand yeah you have to come so. have to come there you go <laughs> <laughs> um so brilliant we've had such a good time chatting with you thank you so much for jumping on the call with us today um where can people find you if they like what they've heard um what's your website social media anything that you've got coming up that you'd like to share with us yes yeah, so you can find me at katenorthrop.com And definitely go there and take my free quiz, which will tell you what your relationship with money says about you and give you customized action steps to move forward towards a healthier money relationship. Uh And and, um, I've got my speaking gig in London coming up, so that's the big big thing that would be be relevant. But I've also got my Money Love course coming up in the spring. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kate. So once again... Kate will be in London on the 8th and 9th of March. Do come down to Ignite Hay House's event and Link see below. the talk then. Link below. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you, Pleasure Kate. to talk to you. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye. Bye.